Um, my first one's the Dolphins um, genuinely look like they're really good and honestly um, could make the playoffs, in my opinion. They'll, they'll, pro- they'll be third in their division, but, I mean, if they have a positive record, then they could do it. They look a lot better than – and they're, they're like, it's not just their offense. Their defense looks pretty good as well. Uh, we touched on this before, but uh, I had DK Metcalf could be the next generational wide receiver, like the next Julio Jones or whoever you want. He just looks like an absolute freak, as we said before, and like he could he could genuinely score like fifteen touchdowns this season, and like we saw what he did on the last drive. I think he had like a thirty yard catch and then the touchdown catch straight after it to win the game. He's all of a sudden got some good weapons, and I think we're really starting to see that like. He, he's still playing elite level and I think people are kind of just still taking the piss out of him, but he's a legit player and I think he, it's, it's time that people probably start respecting him um, the, the way he deserves to be respected. So. It's a miracle! Oh, yeah! Cheers, here's Siddle. Oh, the ball is close. He's given it him. He's given it him. Taylor Siddle's got a hat trick on his birthday. Welcome back to the On the Ball Potty episode. <laughs> back. Welcome back to episode 76 Let's of the On the Ball Potty. <laughs> no, just leave it all in. Great. Welcome back to episode 76 of The Potty. As you probably have heard or seen, depending on what you're watching on or listening, I'm once again joined by Christian Pilcher. How are we, mate? Not bad, mate. How are things with you? Yeah, pretty decent, pretty decent. Just got through the other side of a, of a tough uni time. So I'm um, back to grinding The Potty, which is what we love. Um, and Good we're back you. here again for our second instalment of our weekly NFL podcast. Um, if you haven't seen the episode from last week, probably don't go check it out because it's all irrelevant now because the week has passed. But um, <laughs> um, we, we are starting a weekly NFL potty. So this is the week five review, a little bit of a week six preview as well at the end, but mainly just a week five review, um, both in real life, NFL and fantasy Um review talk um but yeah we'll just be chatting all things nfl um today um how do you find week five mate um well i know well yeah week, so you're pretty depressed stinker stinker of a week in fantasy but in terms of the games there are actually quite a few uh juicy games which we'll get into soon so that was that was good i guess yeah quite a few upsets what for you what was match of the week Match of the week, um, I actually had it, oh uh, yeah, the Seahawks-Vikings, um, yeah. that's probably yours as well, but there were a few, to, there were actually a few to pick from, but that was just a great match. The Vikings really stood up, I thought, especially on offense, and obviously Russell Wilson, as he does, came in clutch last minute and won the game for them, but it was a great game, and thankfully it was prime time for us, so we could watch it. Yeah, I can't believe how quickly um, Russell Wilson just charged down the field at the end there. Um, you, thought, you thought the Vikings were home and hose, and all of a sudden I was kind of questioning the Seahawks. I was thinking, like, maybe they've just had a soft draw to start, haven't played many good defences. Um, but I think it was more just a pretty good showing from the Vikings. Dalvin Cook put on a clinic in the first half. Yeah, um, and Madison, actually, when he came Yeah, on. I think Madison's definitely one of the most underrated backups going around. We saw him... Yeah a few matches last year when Dalvin was out and he was always pretty good. Um, So I think he's definitely underrated. I think the commentators weren't really giving him credit when he came on for Cook. I reckon he's better than Latavius Murray. Yeah. It could be a spicy one, but yeah, yeah, I reckon he is. Probably similar, but yeah, I'd probably give the nod to Madison as well. You never know though. I think the Vikings have a pretty elite like O-line and stuff because they seem to just eat meat as those boys. But yeah, I'd probably back that. Um, But yeah, impressive um almost probably more of an impressive performance from the vikings than the seahawks to be honest but the seahawks did come out victors to stay undefeated perfect record russell wilson adds another you know tick to his mvp campaign with a last two minute drill um victory so 
Yeah, um, not really much else to talk about that. Um, DK Metcalf just put on a show in that second half, didn't he? Um, yeah. Probably, uh, I think Russell Wilson came out and said he could be like the best receiver of all time um, last week. And I think just he's so strong and so fast and tall like and big. Like it, I don't even know how he's physically possible. Like it's he's made in a lab. It's, yeah. it's a joke. He um, works a freak of nature. Yeah, he's definitely taking over that Seahawks offense and is now Russ's go-to. Um, but, yeah, that's all I've got for, for that match. It was definitely match of the week, in my opinion. Um, yep. Most impressive victories. Um, what have you got here? Um, I just had one. Uh, for me, it was the Raiders over the Chiefs. Um, no one would have seen this coming at all. Everyone just thought the Chiefs were the best team in the NFL, but the Raiders flying under the radar and I think people finally start giving them credit now because they're the real deal and it was a great performance. And Derek Carr looks real good. Yeah, first time they've won in Kansas since like 2012, I think. So pretty big um, win for the Raiders. Um, I believe they have the highest strength of victory so far. So the, out of the teams really? they've beaten, they have like the highest combined record um, because they've They've beaten the Saints. Oh, they did lose to the Patriots. I can't remember who else they've beaten. But, um, yeah, that Chiefs win is very impressive and might talk about it in a little bit. But the AFC wildcard picture is looking very spicy at the moment. Every week it completely flips on its head. So um, looking forward to seeing how that goes. But, yeah, the Raiders look legit. Derek Carr looks good. That offense is kind of just motoring right now. That Chiefs defense is no joke. So to put 40 up against them, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, um, my, my I had that one as my main one. My other one, probably the Browns beating the Colts. Um, Colts came into it looking like the best defense in the league, um, and then the Browns put on thirty two against them. Um, we know the Browns are in great offensive form, but we thought maybe the Colts was a lot bigger of an order than some of their previous matches, like the Bengals and the Cowboys. Um, but they still put up points against well at the time what was the best defense in the league. Um, and they got the win over them, which was really important. Um, once again, a big factor in that AFC Wild Cup picture, both teams probably not going to win their division. Um, Colts are an outside chance, but I'd, I'd probably put, have to put my money with the Titans, especially after today's victory over the Bills. But, um, yeah, it's going to be a big one. As I said with the Raiders, the AFC Wild Cup picture looks spicy, and this is another one that probably shocked us. I probably would have put my money with the Colts. But, um, yeah, we talked about it last week, just a little preview. But, yeah, big from the Browns getting up. Yeah. Uh, my, my my final one I just wanted to mention was the Bears beating the Bucks. I don't think the Bears looked comprehensive, but, like, to beat a team with the um, skill players that the Bucks have and to keep them to only 19 points, I think their defense is in elite form right now and their offense is doing enough just to get the wins over the board and they are four and one so can't really hate on them um but yeah most mo- any any other victories you want to point out or do you want to go to the most disappointing losses no i'll go i'll go to the disappointing losses um i've got two here firstly the 49ers putting up an absolute yeah. stinker against the dolphins mind you the dolphins actually kind of seem like they're genuinely good but Something seriously wrong at the Niners. Um, their defense has come down considerably, and Jimmy Garoppolo might be the third best quarterback that they have on their roster. So their offense is trash as well. So I don't. I'd say there's no way they're making the playoffs now. Yeah, I might talk about it in the next section in the things we've learned. But yeah, not good times for the 49ers right now. Um, my other disappointing loss. I've I've got two more. Um, but that was the main one. Uh, Falcons losing at home to the Panthers. Yeah, that was my um, one. It's all the firing of the GM and Dan Quinn, the head coach, um, to deservedly so. They're now zero and five, um, against a Panthers team who are now three and two, I believe, which is pretty outrageous. But um, uh, if you just look at their like the Falcons should be beating the Panthers in the situation they're in. Panthers, um, they're not in, they're not in like a premiership window or anything. Um, no, nowhere near it. And the Falcons are only just coming off like their peak almost um, when, when they should have won a Super Bowl the other season. Um, yeah, I don't know what's happened there in Atlanta. It's all gone to shit, really. Um, and then the other one, the, the, the match this morning, um, the Bills going down 42, um, well, the Titans beat them 42 to 16. 
uh, that's pretty poor from the Bills. Given everything that's been circling around the Titans right now, I could imagine um, there was a lot on their minds apart from this game. And for the Titans to come out and put 42 on them, um, the Bills are meant to be one of the best defences in the league and they have not shown that so far this season. So I think that was a pretty disappointing loss despite their strong start to the season. Um, but that could have also been an impressive victory. Um, that was pretty good from the Titans. Yeah, that was a definitely a surprising one. Yeah, uh, things we learned from the past week, mate. Um, make three or so points. What What's your first point you want to make? Um, my first one's the Dolphins um, genuinely look like they're really good and honestly um, could make the playoffs, in my opinion. They'll, they'll, pro- they'll be third in their division, but, I mean, if they have a positive record, then they could do it. They look a lot better than – and they're, they're like, it's not just their offense. Their defense looks pretty good as well. Yeah, their defense is underrated, I think. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, they've, they've been great the last three weeks. Only one, one score behind Seahawks last week, beat the Jags comfortably and now smashing the 49ers. I don't know. We, we just mentioned a few of those AFC wildcard teams, the Colts, Browns, Raiders. Uh, maybe even the Titans. I, I think they are a little bit off them, but I think they're definitely going to be um, improving on what we saw from them last year. It could be looking at an even record or something, so maybe 7-9, and 8-8. Eight and eight. So they will be there or thereabouts for sure. Um, but, yeah, I'm liking the Titans right now. A bit of um, the, the Dolphins, sorry, a bit of Fitz magic. Yeah, um, he looks good. I, pre- I predicted them to um, finish on top of the Patriots. Still a chance, you never know. Um, <laughs> All right, my first thing we've learned, if you if you were following my Twitter, um, go check it out. Um, you can find the links to the, through this um, episode or whatever. Um, the 49ers are in big trouble, and they could become the newest victim of the Super Bowl loser hangover. So I was doing, I was listening to a podcast, and they were talking about. Um, they were talking about Ron Rivera and Dan Quinn, and they were saying maybe there's more of an effect um, on losing the Super Bowl than people think from a coach's standpoint. Um, but I just went and did some research, and, yeah, three of the last four Super Bowl losers have missed the playoffs in one of the following two seasons. Um, the Rams now go two and th- – uh, not the Rams, the 49ers now go two and three, and they have had the second easiest strength of schedule. Um, in the whole league behind the Steelers, and they're only two and three. So they have had a few injuries, but a few of them aren't coming back. Um, Bosa, um, Solomon Thomas both did ACLs. I think Richard Sherman's out for quite a long time. Um, and, yeah, it's not looking good there. This is, their, <laughs> this is their next seven games. So they've got the Rams, the Patriots, the Seahawks, the Packers, the Saints, the Rams, the Bills. So... <laughs> I hear I want to like they are in the huge trouble. They like might even come fourth in their division. So I think at this point, as you mentioned earlier, I would be very shocked if they made the playoffs. Uh, I think the only thing saving them right now is the other, probably we were probably shocked by this. We probably thought the NF, NFC wildcard race was going to be hot, but that's probably the only thing saving them right now that the NFC wildcard teams don't look too good. Like you've got the Bears, they're, even though they're four and one, they don't look invincible. Then you've got like the Saints and the um the Bucks. They're not looking too yeah. hot. Um, and then obviously the NFC East, that's just a train wreck. So there's still a chance to sneak in, but yeah, something's got to change fast. And the most alarming thing for me with them is their defense. Um, that's what they pride themselves on last week. Yes, they have lost a few players. Um, that's what they pride themselves on last season. They have lost a few players, but to be conceding 43 um, points to the Dolphins, like that's unheard of from the 49ers last year who averaged the fewest yards per play out of, of any defense. Um, they gave up. They gave that up. So, yeah, worrying signs at the 49ers. Yes, they do have a few players coming back from injury and stuff, um, but, yeah, they don't want to get too far behind and that sh- schedule is very scary. Um, and as you said, a lot of QB concerns going on at the moment there. Um, what what's your other thing? What's your other one of your other points? Uh, we touched on this before, but uh, I had DK Metcalf could be the next generational wide receiver, like the next Julio Jones or whoever you want. He just looks like an absolute freak, as we said before, and like he could he could genuinely score like fifteen touchdowns this season. 
And like we saw what he did on the last drive. I think he had like a 30-yard catch and then the touchdown catch straight after it to win the game. So, yeah, he's a freak. Yeah, I don't know how anyone can defend him because there's no cornerback big enough. Like the, most of the cornerbacks are quite small and like skinny. Yeah. Um, they're fast, but that's about it. Um, it would be interesting to see. Oh, I don't, I don't know if they've played the Rams yet. I don't think they have. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how he matches up against Jalen Ramsey, who's probably one of the more physically um, dominant cornerbacks in the league. Um, so, but yeah, what we saw him do to like Stefan Gilmore and stuff like that, I, don't, I actually don't know how you stop him because he's yeah. so fast, um, so strong. It seems unstoppable right now. And, um, and especially with the Carson running game being on form, it's yeah. making so much space for everyone. Yeah, what were you going to say? Yeah, and especially with uh, Russell Wilson throwing to him, it's just going to yeah. be in the perfect spot every time. Yeah, exactly. Definitely an exciting prospect. Um, my next point is this is probably a bit harsh, but I've gone the Steelers are overrated. <laughs> they've had the easiest strength of schedule in the whole league. Um, they've conceded 20-plus points to the Broncos, Texans, and the Eagles. Um, they won 38-29 to 29 against the Eagles on the weekend. Um, they've only scored 30-plus. Uh, they haven't scored above. I think they've only scored 30-plus once. Um, and they've got the Browns, Titans, and the Ravens in the next three. So we're going to find out if they actually are overrated or if I'm just talking dribble here because they're three tough opponents. Um, but, yeah, on tra- they're on track for the playoffs, and I still think they will make the playoffs because they've got a light schedule. But um, I reckon they might, if they keep this form up, I think they're going to go into the playoffs overhyped and they're going to crash out pretty easily because their defense was their thing that carried them last year, obviously, with Big Ben out. And it really has not been the same this year. Um, those three teams that I mentioned earlier, the Broncos, Texans, and the Eagles, they're probably three of the worst offensive teams going around. And to be shipping 20-plus to them, you can only imagine what like the Chiefs will do to them. Um, but, yeah, int- it'll be interesting to see how those next three teams go against them, the Browns, Titans, and Ravens, because they're all pretty good offensive sides themselves. So we'll see if they actually are overrated. Um, because, yeah, right now I've got some concerns about the Steelers despite being undefeated so yeah huge yeah, huge game this week against the Browns yeah big one big one but yeah that match against the Eagles on the weekend when I saw that score I, I actually don't know when the points came so there might have been some junk time junk time points but yeah um no, it was um me. I'm pretty sure Steelers scored the last touchdown so it was like a one point game or something oh, until really? until the end so yes there are there are definitely concerns yeah. Um, all right. What's your What's your other point? Um, the Chargers don't know how to win, is what I said, because yeah. they they're one and four. We talked about this the other day, but they're one and four, and their only win was a three point win against the Cincinnati Bengals this season, and they look really good, like both offensively and defensively. But they just keep losing by like three points. They've got two o- overtime losses against two really good teams, to be fair to them. But it was a similar case last season. Like a lot of their losses were by like three points and they sort of seemed to choke quite a bit. So, yeah, I don't know. I think it's a bit deeper than than the talent going on on the field. Might be a yeah. bit of a mental thing. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's frustrating because I like the Chargers. Um, their defense keeps them in pretty much every match as well. So it's always going to yeah. be tight matches. So if they just learn how to finish them off, um, all of a sudden they could quite comfortably become a playoff team pretty fast as well. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's looking all right, though. Um, they have had some tough games. They're putting up some good fights. I think their last three matches have been the Chiefs, Bucks, and Saints. So um, not the easiest matches. Probably wouldn't expect them to win. But, yeah, they've got to start taking – um, advantage of their chances because yeah pretty poor um, to cough up that lead they had against the Saints um, my final one's a very vague point but it's basically I think that this season is going to be the most unpredictable season of all time like I, I think we can't be la- even though I've just come out and said the Steelers are overrated I don't think we can be launching into assumptions too early because we're seeing if offenses just take over matches and Every all the good defenses from the last few seasons, they're taking a while to get going. We saw the Chiefs concede forty to the Raiders, Steelers conceded twenty nine to the Eagles, the Niners conceded forty three to the Dolphins. 
the Colts conceded 32 to the Browns and the Bills conceded 42 to the Titans. So um, that's five of the best defenses right there, all, all, you know, getting dominated by pretty weak offenses. So I think we all just need to hold judgment a little bit. Um, We saw on the weekend with Dak unfortunately going down how much one injury can change a whole team's outlook on a season. So, um, yeah, I, I just think although we're here to review the NFL and we're going to be making calls every week, I think this, like, I don't think we can go too hard on a team early. Um, it's only been five weeks. I think they're going to take a while to get into it. There was no practice matches beforehand. And I, I don't think we know who are going to be the title contenders just yet because I think the good teams might not necessarily have unearthed themselves just yet. Um, for example, we saw how much the AFC wild card pitcher changed in one week um, with the Colts lost to the Browns, the Raiders win over the Chiefs, so on and so forth. So, And the Eagles all of a sudden probably being the favourite to win the NFC East. Um, <laughs> not sure how I feel about that, but um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's a pretty vague point, pretty pointless um, garbage coming out of my mouth right now, but I just feel like that was worth mentioning that it's going to be an unpredictable season. I think the the person who wins the Super Bowl could definitely be someone who just hits form from like week 10 onwards or something. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how it unfolds, though, because at the moment it's kind of looking like anyone's game. Um, but, yes, that now we, that moves on us, us on to our positional chat. Um, we'll start with the quarterback, obviously. Um, so quarterback of the week to those who didn't listen. We're going to be talking about the to, didn't listen last week we're going to talk about the quarterback running back wide receiver and tight ends um we'll talk about them in in real life but also in fantasy context um so yeah qb of the week i think we've both got the same man um ryan fitzpatrick of the miami dolphins yeah is that correct yep yeah absolutely killed it 350 yards from 22 attempts which is just outrageous three touchdowns um 78.5 seven percent completion rate and he led the fellas down in Miami to a dominant win um, over the Niners, 43 to 17 in the Niners building. So actually, I don't know if it was, I can't even remember. Um, yeah. But yeah I remember it insane from Fitzpatrick. Um, he's, he, I think he, he's seriously underrated league wide. Like I feel like he's just a bit of a gimmick because he's really old, played for heaps of teams, got a beard. Um, like I feel like no one really takes him seriously, but honestly, with thinking about the context he's had to play in the situations he's played in the last three years, he took over from Jameis Winston at the Bucks in 2018. He was at the worst, like a tanking team last year in Miami. And now this year he's all of a sudden got some good weapons. And I think we're really starting to see that like he he's still playing elite level. And I think people are kind of just still taking the piss out of him, but he's a legit player. And I think he's, it's time that people probably start respecting him um, the the way he deserves to be respected. So, yeah. yeah a, um, a bit of personal love for the Fitz as well. So. I'm, I'll admit I'm one of the blokes that did doubt him coming into the year and for the first few weeks of the year, but now I'll fully admit that he is a baller. To, to do that against the 49ers was unreal and... Like in that in that age bracket, he's genuinely like I'd almost say he's better than Matt Ryan and blokes like that at this point, which is which is pretty outrageous. But I think he is. Yeah, right. Right now, I'd probably have to agree with you. All right, QB rises and falls. So these these are the people who have risen based off their week five performance or their week five something that happened in week five. Um, in terms of fantasy. Risen and fallen, starting with your risers. Who have you got in the QB spot? Um, I'll I'll go with Big Ben of the Steelers. Um, he's another bloke I doubted in uh, coming into the year, and every week he just puts out three hundred yards and a few touchdowns. And he's he's I believe he's averaging over twenty fantasy points a week. So for me, he's genuinely in that top ten QB conversation. Yeah, he's so he's so reliable. Like I think every I think every score he's gotten over the over the four matches he's played, they've all been within like three points of each other or something. So he's just consistently putting up the same numbers. Um, he doesn't have the highest ceiling, but definitely someone you're happy to rely on, especially if you have him as a QB two 
in a two quarterback league, you would be very chuffed to have him there. Just you can you can back him in to do well every single week, basically. Yeah. And his weapons look really good as well. And a yeah. great offensive line. Yeah. Um, and he's probably only going to get better from here because, like, you know, he had a whole year off last season. So um, the chemistry with the new receivers and stuff, it's going to get better from here, I'd say. Um, my riser, we talked about him last week in the exact same section, but I'm backing him in again. Yeah. Um, he is now up to my – currently he's my QB7 in my rolling rankings. Um, it's Justin Herbert. Um, I have to say, I only just considered this as I was talking about it, so I'm not sure why I've done that to myself. But he did have an OT. Um, they they did have an extra – like an overtime um, in this match, so his score was probably a little bit inflated. But 27.36 – against a fairly a Saints defense who's normally pretty good. This year, the stats probably don't say that, but they're normally a pretty good defense. Um, in the prime time, the big lights, all the pressure was on. This is when the young quarterbacks usually just choke and do nothing. I um, mean, he's put up 27.36 fantasy points. Um, that's now three 20-plus scores against good defenses um, he's put in in his short time in the, in the league. I mean, he's got a favourable draw to come after the bye this week. They've got the Jags, the Raiders, the Dolphins and the Jets in their next five. They've got one tough match in there. I can't remember who it is. But the other four matches, um, all very likeable um, matchups for young Justin. And, yeah, Keenan Allen was out for most of the match. Um, I can't even remember what day it was. I think it was Tuesday or Monday. Um, oh, yeah, it was Tuesday. For, Tuesday for us, Monday for in the US. Um, Keenan Allen was out for most of it. Um, Eckler's out now, so they're going to be throwing more. I just think there's not really anything negative to say about Herbert. Um, where do you have him now in your rankings, roughly? Yeah, I'd, he's similar to Big Ben, like in that top 10 conversation now. Um, yeah, the bloke's, the bloke's an absolute baller. And he's not just... he he. We saw last week, he, he can throw the ball deep as well, which is just... That just makes him so much better. And he, he's like mobile as well, so he can scramble if he wants to. And he's just a lot better than everyone thought. So, yeah, he's an absolute gem of a – if you've got him on your fantasy squad. Yeah, fair play. We're, we're not too happy about him because um, yeah. James, who Curtis, who's always on this podcast on the NFL episodes, um, he snagged him up on the waivers. The week he was started because Tyra was injured – Despite him claiming this um, against this, he wasn't the starter at the time. He was just filling in for one week. It's an absolute fluke pickup. I'm not happy about it. And he's landed an absolute gem. So, now nah, fair play, Curtis. But, yeah, he's definitely a riser for me. Um, do you have anyone else you want to mention? No, they were my two, Big Ben and Herbert. All right, yeah. So, Ryan Fitzpatrick, obviously a riser. We talked about what he did this week. So, yeah, four matches in a row of 20-plus. And, yeah, I think he should be a starter in every two-quarterback league at the moment um, because I have to say I had I had high expectations for the Fitz and it's come through nicely. You were, you were high on him. Yeah, sadly, all my high draft picks, um, my gambles didn't pay off like it did with the Fitz. But Andy Dalton, my final riser, I don't want to go into him because obviously we have no stats, but where do you have Andy Dalton in the rankings? How bullish are you on him? Yeah, look, it's a tough one. Um, definitely, he's not he's not up there with uh, with Justin Herbert for me, just because it is Andy Dalton, and the bloke got benched at the Bengals last season. But the system that he's in will definitely give him a lot of opportunity to get a lot of yards. So, yeah, it'll be it'll be an interesting one. Yeah, he's my QB seventeen right now. Um, I'd be very interested in picking him up off the waiver wire, um, but all three of my quarterbacks I have above him, so I don't really know how I'll be able to do it. Um, yeah, I just have him right at – I feel like there's kind of th- three or four tiers of quarterbacks. So you've got like the elite top five. Um, then there's kind of a pack below that. You've got like Brady, Stafford, Tannehill, Watson. And then for me, Dalton's just below that pack. Um, so, like, he's not as good as a quarterback as those guys, but his situation is probably better than theirs and his weapons are probably better. Um, but, yeah, I probably won't be picking him up just because I rate my three quarterbacks above him. Um, but I definitely think 
in two quarterback leagues out there if you're struggling and have a pretty average quarterback, I would definitely be looking at Dalton right now, um, especially if you can drop someone who's not doing that well. You can suss it out this week, see how he goes, and it's um, a bit of a win-win situation, really. Um, so, yeah, who's your faller in the quarterback position? Well, basically all three quarterbacks that I own in fantasy, Danny Dimes, Matt Ryan, and Joe Burrow. I think the highest scorer was about 7.5 out of the three of them. But I don't think Danny Dimes can fall any lower, to be honest. Yeah, so he, he, I didn't have him down. I'd say yeah. Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan's the main one. Um, just it's The Falcons just stink. Their O-line stinks. And he, needs, he also needs Julio Jones back ASAP which you also need that because he's in your team. But, yeah, I think he's definitely a faller, but once Julio comes back and hopefully um, they don't go to shit with the changing coach, but he should bounce back because his weapons are still really good in Ridley, Julio, Hurst, etc. Yeah, um, I I can't lie. Yes, he did really bad, but... I actually don't have him too low in my rankings. I've got him as my QB fourteen, so could yeah. get a deal done there, mate. I um, still had um. The reason he's a faller for me is because he was still in my top eight before this week. Oh, okay, yeah. So yeah, yeah. That was that's a bit ambitious from you, my friend. After an eleven, an eleven and a twelve, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think the new coach, well, the interim coach. I think that often works in an offense's favor. Like we sh- saw it with Deshaun Watson yeah. on the weekend. I know it was against the Jags, but um, he put up nearly 25, easily his best score of the season so far. So I think sometimes, and we see it in pretty much every sport around the world, really, when a coach gets sacked, sometimes that can, um, the players can have a new lease on life, really, and they can just start letting loose. Um, so I kind of am a bit worried about Todd Gurley, though, because I feel like Matt Ryan's might start balling out again. But anyway, um, yeah, I, I'm not too down on Matt Ryan, but yeah, definitely can't be scoring below seven if you want to be like a, an elite quarterback. So, yeah, not, not ideal from him. That's uh, It's two weeks in a row that he hasn't put up a touchdown. So that definitely should change. Yeah, hope, hope so. Um, my main fuller is my man, Lamar Jackson. Um, look, mm. he, he was he had an – I don't know. It's a tough one with him. Um, I, I've been toying with it all day about – like I honestly have been getting anxiety about Lamar Jackson. I, for those who don't know and don't listen to the podcast often or this is their first time, I drafted Lamar Jackson with the second pick of the – of the what's our league called? Fantasy footy. <laughs> oh, of the, that's pretty Super flex, uh Two quarterback league. Yeah, so I drafted him for pick two. Very high on him. Um, I thought he was going to um, average about three or four more um, than the than the, than the QB two, um, and he's currently stinking it up, as Pilch would say. Um, and this game against the Bengals, yes, the Bengals' defense has actually been surprisingly improved this season. Um, but you thought it would have been the perfect bounce back game for him and the Ravens as a team, to be honest. Um, but he decided to whip out thirteen point five. Um, almost cost me my season, to be honest, um, as I was 0-4 and, and had to win this week. And he's uh, my main man, who I would back myself in to be able to rely on, um, decided to pump out that. Um, but, yeah, he's been injured recently, so that's not ideal. You don't want that in a player who's, like, questionable every every couple of weeks. Um, his team's not playing well on offense at all. Um, he's not been rushing that much this season like he was last year. And his team's averaging less than three touchdowns a game um, so far this season. And they've got tougher fixtures to come than what they've already had. So, yeah, big concerns over Lamar Jackson. I'm definitely considering um, drafting him away, uh, trading him away. Right now, my dilemma is wh- how would, like, all right, it's March. It's March 2021, and I, I'm going to sleep. Am I sleeping better if I've kept him all season and he's just underperformed? Or am I sleeping better if I bring someone in, they flop, and he goes back to being beast? Like, I don't oh, know. You're definitely sleeping worse with uh, the latter option there. Yeah. The only thing is I, I am a proactive fantasy coach. I trade people too often. And, however, that that's fun. <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm tempted to see what I can get for him on the, on the market. But I do think in our league, 
of people who don't know too much about in real life NFL. I don't think I think his value would be a lot lower than it would be in a normal league. Um, yeah. But yeah, very worried that's about my, that's my exact problem. No one wants any of my players because they're all averaging about five less than what they should be at the moment. Yeah, which sucks um, balls, but. Yeah, so I might be using Fitzy to my advantage for that reason. <laughs> but yeah, um, do you have anyone else you want to mention here? No, nah, mate. My three boys. I already mentioned them. Joey Burrow. Yeah, Joey, Joey Burrow is probably lucky to not have an in-depth yeah. look. Here look, it's but... same with Matt Ryan. It's not. It's it's the situation that he's in. Um, arguably the worst offensive line. And they were playing the Ravens, who are yeah. an unreal defense. But yeah. he's got a tough fixture, so definitely, definitely a bit worried. Yeah, someone else I wanted to mention was Kirk Cousins um, against Seattle, um, who so far have been one of the worst defenses in the league, been shipping so many points fantasy-wise. Um, and he only put out 14.16. And, yeah, I've never really rated him, especially as a fantasy option. Um, but I know he's probably a starter in most two quarterback leagues. And yeah, for me, that performance on the weekend, um, he, he's not had the greatest start to the season, but if he put up, you know, a 20, 25 against Seattle, all of a sudden you start to think, well, maybe he's an all right um, QB two option in a two QB league. But yeah, for me, he shouldn't be starting in a two QB league um, when he's putting up 14 against one of the worst defenses in the comp. So yeah, I'm up well and truly off the Kirk Cousins fantasy bandwagon. So, yeah, um, moving on to the running back position, running back of the week, mate, who have you got here? Uh, Mike Davis of the Carolina Panthers. Um, I don't have his stats on me at the moment, but I think he scored, he had about nine receptions, scored a touchdown, uh, ruined my week in fantasy because I was versing him and he put up a 30, but he's genuinely a good player, so... It's been unluck- unlucky that he's sitting behind McCaffrey. I wonder if he'll get a move this season Jack- or next season. Do you reckon he'll take any of McCaffrey's touches? I reckon he will, he, he will to start because McCaffrey's still got his ankle. Like His ankle won't be perfect right away, I don't think. But yeah. once McCaffrey gets going, I don't think. He might run like run a few routes like from the slot or something, because I think he's quite a good receiver, but mm. I doubt he'll get many rushes. Yeah, fair enough. Um, good performance from Mark Davis. My RB of the week's probably a bit of a shock because he didn't have the most yards going around, but I've got Ezekiel Elliott. Um, two touchdowns, 105 yards from scrimmage, including 91 rushing yards. Um, it was also a big win um, in a chaotic game for the team, obviously losing their franchise quarterback and Dak Prescott. Um, yeah, but 91 yards on the floor from 18 attempts. The Giants have had the fifth least rushing yards per attempt so far this season. They've allowed the fifth least. So pretty good D-line, and he carved them up with the 91, 91 rushing yards, really helped them get to get towards that important win. Um, although they, you would think they should have beaten the Giants by more just with the whole Dak situation. I think they deserve some slack to be cut. And at this point, Nowadays, especially in that league, I think any win, no matter how it um, happens, is a big win because who knows that that the winner of that division could honestly have like seven wins. Well, I wonder what the lowest win total anyone has ever won a division with. Because like, I wonder if you could win a division with six wins. Because it's, not probably, it's probably been done before. Yeah, the NFC East might give it a whirl this season. Um, but yeah, I think Zeke was pretty good. Um, yep. Rises, who, who's risen in your RB rankings, big fella? Uh, he was one of my risers last week. He's one of my risers again this week. Uh, Joe Mixon of the Cincinnati Bengals only scored 15 points, but had 25 rushing attempts and six, eight targets, six receptions. So basically, ever since I've traded him, Giovanni Bernard has been cut and Mixon's doing it all. So. He's pretty much back. He's pretty much a top eight running back now, which yeah. feels good. Twenty five attempts. That's outrageous. Yeah, in a in a blowout loss, they were there was two point five yards per attempt against the Ravens, but I mean yeah. they're giving him the ball. So, by the way, you just you just reminded me um, when you said the word cut. Did you see Lev Bell? 
Oh yeah, yep. Actually, pretty yep. spicy. Good from us doing an NFL um, podcast and not even mentioning that till the well thirty thirty fifth minute. But well, he's going to be. I was going to talk about him uh, later, actually, in the, oh, in the things to watch. Oh, I like it. I like it. We hardly even mentioned Dan Quinn, but he doesn't deserve a mention. Um, Rises. I'm actually getting around one of my fellas here. I'm normally they're normally my fallers, but Todd Gurley. Um, he scored 25 points, and the main thing is he only had one TD. Um, I'm not one of these rookie um, NFL fantasy players who's just going to um, get around the guy similar to yourself there with the mixing call. Um, we're not going to get baited in by a big 30 when they've scored three touchdowns. Um, so for him to score, take away that touchdown, he scored 19 um, base points, if you know what I mean, um, against Carolina who have been pretty bad in the rushing defense, but overall they're not the worst defense going around. Um, and the Atlanta O-line has been looking pretty bad this year, but he decided to pump out around nine yards per carry. So um, did he, he just, Do you know if he broke like a big one or was he just like consistent? Oh, no, I probably should check that out, to be honest. But um, yeah, I probably do need to have a look at that because that, that really helps the case when they whip out like a 50. But yeah. Um, did Matt Ryan throw the ball much? Do you know? Uh, I doubt he would have, considering his stat line. He only had yeah. like 190 yards. Yeah, maybe they were just running it down their throat. But yeah, I don't know. I say this, and yes, I think Todd Gurley has risen after a slow start, but I am a little bit concerned. Julio, Ridley didn't play on the weekend, did he? No, he did. Ridley played. Oh, okay, but Julio's to come back. Um, there's a new coach or interim coach coming in. They might start to throw the ball more. Um, so there is uncertainty with Gurley, but um, yeah, really like those base numbers um, when you take away that TD. Um, anyone who can get 19 points without a TD, that's always what I like to see. So well done, Todrick. Proud of your big fella. Um, who's your – anyone else you want to mention in there or just straight to the falls? I'll mention my other one. This bloke only scored 10 or 11 points as well, but Raheem Mostert from the – 49ers um the game script pretty much meant they had to throw the ball uh every snap but he did his usual came out and got nine yards per carry whipped out <laughs> like 90 yards on the ground is it joke and like, like, he's so good. their offensive line is ridiculously good though yeah. like it must yeah. be but yeah, i mean yeah he's good and he's clearly like Jarek mckinnon was balling out while he was injured but he, <laughs> yeah. uh, most it's clearly their number one back yeah, that's my number one fall, actually. Very cheap, low blow, having, having a crack at someone's RB3. But um, he was offered to me in fantasy last week by the Glizzy Goblins. Um, who's Smart a team, rejection. A team, well, I didn't even reject it. I just left it hanging. Oh, saw, you're a dog. I just saw the notification in my email. I didn't check fantasy till Sunday night. Uh, but, yeah, Jarek McKinnon, um, as you said, he was doing quite well um, when most of um, them – Coleman were out. Is Coleman still out? Or I don't even know, but I'm I'm pretty sure it's just shit. Yeah, <laughs> Kevin Coleman. Yeah, McKinnon only touched the ball three times, um, and yeah, um, his ship is sailed. So if you have McKinnon, just chuck him on the waivers. Um, yeah, no point really, um, unless you're backing in most of to get injured again. Um, so yeah, my number. I'll say my other four, and then we'll go back to you. My other four is Devin Singletary. Um, yeah. just. Tennessee have allowed, before today's game, Tennessee had allowed the third most yards per play. Um, so one of the worst defences in the first over the first three weeks, Zach Moss was out, who'd been taking his red zone touches. Um, and he decided to only run for 25. Wait, did, did Moss play this morning? No. No. Oh, okay. Um, and he decided to only um, run for 25 yards off 11 attempts jeez that, that is shocking yeah like honestly so bad like that sucks yeah that's <laughs> so, yeah i think singletary's it, like so overrated like i don't rate him at all yeah so if look he shouldn't be starting if you've got a two running back flex situation i don't think he's good enough to even flex anymore um yeah. just when moss is back he doesn't yeah. have to touch touchdown scoring potential and he's not doing enough on the ground um, so yeah, that yeah, single Terry, similar to McKinnon. It's all at this point, it's almost a drop to the waivers situation. Um, but yeah, no good from single Terry. Who who's your fallers, mate? Um, 
once again, two of my team. A uh, bit of bit of context here. My team scored seventy nine uh, fantasy points this week, so a lot of the fallers are my players. But Clyde Edwards Alaire, he was my faller last week as well. But this week, I'm like he's playing the Raiders. If he doesn't put up thirty this week, he never will. And he put up about 10, uh, 40 yards, only ten rushing attempts. The Raiders must have got off to like a real hot start because the Chiefs barely had any rushing attempts. But nevertheless, he only had like three receptions and no touchdowns. So I'm getting very worried about Clyde. And I might try and trade him because he still has quite high... um, Like people still view him as a bloke who was drafted really high and he's got high projecteds each week. So Yeah, and everyone froths a Kansas player on fantasy, don't they? That is true, especially Campbell. Yes. Um, do you have anyone else to mention there, or do you want to move on to the wideouts? Uh, and uh, I'll go Josh Kelly of the Chargers. Oh, yeah. what a, did he get injured? No. Nah, uh, so it's pretty it's pretty weird because we saw he was pretty much getting more carries than Austin Eckler, and now Eckler's gone down, and Justin Jackson's getting more carries than Kelly. Yeah, I was going to so, try and trade for him last week when I heard yeah. Eckler. Yeah, like I, I I picked him off the waivers with my first pick, and I was stoked. But yeah, he's he's pretty much irrelevant now. Yeah, I was watching that match, and I was just like, kind of on my laptop, and I was just, I just kept looking up, and every time it was Jackson, I was like, oh, he must have got injured or something in the first half. But I think what it is is, um, Kelly's role is like when it's third and one or on the goal line. He's just a big body. He's not really, he's not like elusive. So he's just going to get you that two or three yards when you really need it. So okay. it's irrelevant for fantasy. Yeah, fair enough. Um, all right, moving on to the wideouts, wide receiver of the week. I don't know if we have the same here, but probably should. Uh, Chase, no, actually, you don't have to. Um, but Chase Claypool um, whipping out the four TDs. He, he did have a one rushing touchdown. He had three carries, which I can't lie, was a bit strange. Um, but, yeah, 116 yards, four TDs, seven receptions from 11 targets, part of, a Steelers win over the Eagles. Um, yeah, pretty impressive to have four TDs in any match. So, yeah, fair play to Chase. Um, who Was he your wide receiver of the week? Yeah, 100%. The bloke balled out. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Not really much else to say. Just four TDs explains it all. Yeah, just all good, right. on, good on him. That's all I'll say. Yeah, riser of the week um, in your wide receiver rankings. Who have you got, big fella? Um, first up, Keenan Allen. Got injured in the... First or second quarter after putting up a touchdown, scored 10 points. But Austin Eckler's out and he's been getting like genuine 12 targets every single week and he looks like a freak. I don't know I don't know why his ADP was like the wide receiver 25 going into the season. For me, he's now a certified top eight wide receiver going forward and... Hopefully, I can get him off Tyler this week because his average still isn't high, but I think it'll he's going to ball out. Yeah, I definitely like that pick. Um, and I think we saw when he got injured how much Herbert went to Mike Williams. I think um, as a young quarterback, inexperienced guy, you'd like to just target one bloke. Um, and I think yeah. obviously Keenan Allen will be that guy. Hopefully, his injury is not, nothing substantial. Nothing that's going to see him like affected in the following weeks, but yeah, definitely spicy. Um, my main riser of the week was Brandon Cooks. Um, I was actually a bit higher than most um, on Brandon Cooks going into the season, and he's been very disappointing um, to this point so far. I don't think he's had more than five targets in a match over the first four weeks, but um, Bill O'Brien gets sacked, Cooks gets 12 targets, eight receptions, one touchdown. Um, it was against the Jags, so that it does have to be taken with a grain of salt, but they have a very easy run of fixtures coming up, and he's receiving balls from one of the best quarterbacks in the league in Deshaun Watson. So, um, And Cooks has shown um, that he is a very good wide receiver over the last you know five or, five or so years. And, yeah, I really like Brandon Cooks. Um, not sure, I'm not sure what's happening with Will Fuller. But um, hopefully Cooks becomes the main man and can keep putting up numbers like that because, yeah, that's pretty spicy from the Cook stuff. Um, might pick him up off the waivers. Maybe a little bit of a John Brown for Brandon Cooks um, waiver claim from Cork coming right up. Um, How'd John Brown yeah. go today? 
No, he didn't play. Oh, okay. He was injured. Yeah, he was injured again. Yep. Um, but speaking of Brown, um, I just wanted to quickly mention, I only just thought of him mid-podcast, but AJ Brown's probably my other riser of the week just because I think his value was diminishing every week. He was injured, as you usually do when you're in fantasy, but I think people were kind of forgetting how good he was at the end of last year. Um, I had him so high in my preseason rankings, I think I had him as the wide receiver seven or something. Um, and this today showed why. Um, Tredavious White wasn't playing, um, the main lockdown corner back of the Buffalo Bills, but they still are a very good um, defense on paper. And he put up, I think, 21.2 points or something. So, yeah, very impressive. I think he had nearly 10 um, receptions. So he's on my bench and I'm like what it, like what I'm seeing from AJ Brown. Good good signs for Mish's men. Um, any any other risers you want to mention? Yeah, we've already we've talked about him enough, but I'll just say DK Metcalf for obvious reasons. Curtis has him yet again. Yeah. And he's had two of our risers. Jesus Christ. How are we going to stop him? <laughs> <laughs> we, should ta- we should we ta- should well, I, I should tank and just just feed you my players. <laughs> <laughs> mate, uh, yeah. I don't think I don't think either of us are making playoffs, mate. Yeah, I know. Which, I like, yeah. We did. So those, we, we we our records suck, but we actually have good knowledge. We just overthink everything. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. My start sits each week are just disgraceful. I have twenty I have twenties on my bench every week and threes on my on my field and I'm absolutely sick of it. Well, yeah, I, st- I streamed Logan Thomas for a nice little <laughs> 1.8 and, and dropped Austin Hooper. Um, four of the week of the wide receivers, I've gone DK Metcalf's counterpart. Oh, I was Lewis. about to say, I thought you were just saying DK Metcalf. Yeah, it's rubbish in the first half, they went missing. Um, but yeah, Tyler Lockett, back-to-back sub-10 scores. I can't lie, I'm not wasn't that big on Tyler Lockett going into the season. Um, where did I have him? I had him all the way down at the wide receiver 33, but I think most people had him higher, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, against Minnesota, who I believe were they, I don't believe this, this is factual. They were they are bottom four for yards per attempt um, in the air, and yeah, he, but he have a shocking secondary. Yeah, he snagged 8.4. So um, DK Metcalf is clearly the main guy for Russell Wilson. And also down at the red zone, he's not really a factor with Greg Olsen and Carson both getting more of the receiving touchdowns, more of the receiving targets down there than him. So, um, yeah, he's like the fourth string option to throw to down there, um, which is where you want them to be the the main guy um, in fantasy. And, yeah, if I was a Tyler Lockett owner, I'd be getting off that train right now. Uh, But, yeah, who's your faller? Another one of my players, Amari Cooper. This is mainly due to the fact that Prescott's injured and he's now got Dalton uh, throwing do you think, him. Do you think, though, he could be like a Tyler Boyd? Yeah, it could be. Cause... Like one bloke, throw it to him every single play. Yeah. Because that sometimes happens when you've got a worse quarterback coming. But, yeah, carry on. That definitely could happen, which I'm bloody praying it does happen because – He's carrying my wide receiver corpse this season. Got absolutely no one. But, um, yeah, he copped the James Bradbury treatment. I kind of expected I, – I, I knew it was a big chance that he'd cop a three because last season we kind of saw him struggle with a few hard tags. But, like, he is a Murray Cooper, so he's still a top ten receiver for me. Yeah, fair enough. Um, that moves us into the tight ends. Tight end of the week, I've gone – I was tempted by Johnny, but Johnny Smith of the Titans, but might talk about him in the next session section, but tight end of the week. I've gone the main man, Travis Kelsey, 108 yards, one touchdown, eight receptions from 12 targets against a fairly solid Raiders defense. Um, they didn't, he didn't quite get the boys over the line, but um, time and time again, um, when the going gets tough, Patrick Mahomes leans on his man and Kelsey always answers the phone. Um, but, yeah, is he your tight end of the week, mate? Yeah, he was as well. The bloke's a freak. And he definitely deserves the the tight end of the week honours this week. Yeah, might, might DM him on Instagram, just let him know he's won the award. Um, <laughs> yeah, right, right. tight end riser of the week. Who have you got here, big fella? I keep saying big fella. I should, so I should change it up. Big man, big man. Well, <laughs> thanks for that, mate. But I've gone... Uh, 
I'll say Austin Hooper. Um, yeah, which is probably a touchy subject. Exactly. Touchy subject for you because you dropped him to the waivers, and I'll probably be welcoming to my team. But um, like, I'm such an idiot. I cop all these like ones, and then the week he does well, I drop him after, and then he does well again. Oh, yeah, it's on. a joke. But yeah, I thought he actually did better than he did. Didn't you say he got like ten points? Yeah, he got ten point seven, but he had no touchdowns. No touchdowns. Okay, and pretty decent, and he had ten targets. And only oh shit. I only caught five of them, so Baker yeah. Mayfield treatment right there. Yeah, no, yeah, he's he definitely looks on the up. He struggled in the first few weeks, but now he looks quite good. And Baker's yeah. Baker's starting to find him a bit. So just purely because I had him so low before this week, he's a riser. Yeah, I, I still like. I actually was lower on the most um, going into the season, but I, th- I had him as the tight end ten. But I think everyone jumped off the bus so quickly. But it's like it's his first match in a new team. Like I think it was always going to take a while. So that's why I was patient at the start. And then I just dropped him just because I needed a tight end to play because Jared Cook was injured. And I thought he'd struggle against the Colts, who had, at that point had only um, conceded 1.8 points per match against a tight end. So I thought um, he would stink it up. But, um, yeah, he did well. Um, might have a bidding award for him on the way of Hawaii, mate. Um my other rise up. Look, I need him, a, mate. <laughs> this was a bit of a rush decision. Um, but Johnny Smith, um, two TDs this morning against the Bills, had 21 points overall. He's slowly becoming a favourite of Tannehill. Um, it, it has to be mentioned that um, Humphreys and Corey Davis both weren't playing. Um, so that might definitely, well, that definitely is boosting. Um, like his point potential. Um, So when they come back, his scoring might take a bit of a hit, but yeah, that's good signs that he's he's his main TD target. And yeah, Johnny, if you, if you're struggling or with the buyers approaching, if one of your um, tight ends has a buy, definitely a good streaming option um, is big Johnny. Um, You were on the bandwagon early, but you decided to drop him. Uh, But that's okay. Thanks, (laughs) man. All right, who's your faller of the week? Um, Zach Ertz again. At this, he scored. He's had one catch for six yards. I think one one point six fantasy points. At this point, he's not even a top fifteen tight end anymore for me. The bloke's just washed. I think. I think it's just the fact that he's washed. Like I don't. I can't see any other reason why he's doing this. I think he just yeah, asked. It has to be the only reason. My, the only thing is, the only positive is Jeffrey and Jackson come back. They could be coming back this week. So there might be more attention go out wide and then there might be more room up the middle. But, yeah, that's not. Potential. Do you know what your snap, cat, what your snap count's like? No, I haven't checked them yet. But, yeah, yeah I don't know. Yeah, it's definitely worrying. Um, and uh, I'm sure a lot of Zach Ertz owners paid a high price for him. Um, and yep. yeah, he's not really delivering at all, is he? Uh, my faller of the week is Dalton Schultz. Um, Dak yeah. did go down, so that could have been a factor, but he was rising pretty much every week until until this one, and he was only targeted three times for one catch. And yeah, they, they scored like 36 or 7 points or something, and for him to only have one catch in a pretty good offensive performance, that's a worry. Um, because like when someone does bad and the team's only scored like you know 10 points you're like oh well that's probably why they just couldn't move the ball with anyone but yeah it looks like Schultz has kind of gone down in the pecking order in terms of targets Um, but we'll see Um, Dalton that's a new that's a new chapter at the Cowboys we don't know who he's going to like to throw to so um, that's a that's a wait and watch that one Um, but yeah probably wouldn't have him as your tight end one if if I was to be honest um, yeah. any, any other tight ends you want to mention? Yeah, Tyler Higby. Similar with Ertz, he's just been shocking this season after doing really well in the second half of last season. And I think he scored either four or six uh, this week on like three catches. So he's pretty much in the irrelevant uh, realm as well at this yeah, point. Yeah, by the way, random question, just thought of this because you talked about the Rams. Daryl Henderson... Is he worth starting in a two running back flex league or no? Well, I had him before this week and then dropped him because Malcolm Brown got more touches. So I don't know. 
The, the Rams' backfield is always going to put up points, but they're a full-on committee, and now Akers is back as well. Yeah, uh, so I, I wouldn't go I mean, it, it's, it's too unpredictable. It's too unpredictable. Yeah, yeah that, that is true. All right, moving on to the final section of the podcast. Things to watch this week. Hope you've enjoyed the episode so far. A um, little preview of what's to come in week six of the NFL. Let's be real, none of these matches might happen because COVID is changing the NFL schedule every day at this point. Um, but first up, what, what's your first thing you're looking out for this week? Well, I've carried it over from last week and it's the Michael Thomas impact on the Saints. Um, obviously, I clocked, um, was it, uh, who did he clock? The corner, uh, his, yeah, one of the, the uh, cornerbacks, it's one of the cornerbacks. He clocked him at training because he called him slant boy or something. So he didn't play. So yeah, we just got to wait another way. As in like, was it like in reference to that he runs slant routes? Yeah. <laughs> How that weird is that? Like his own, his own cornerbacks gone and gone and said it yeah, to him, and like, he's punched him. But like, why is he taking that much offense to that? Just like, yeah, I'm the king of the slant. Yeah, I don't know. I thought I don't know. When you first said it, I was like, maybe it's like something to do with his eyes or something. But yeah, fair enough. Um, my yeah, vet, definitely looking out for that one, especially as as a dream. Dre, Dre, Dre Brees, as a Drew Brees owner, um, definitely looking out for that one. Um, and then my main thing is the Browns versus the Steelers. Um, the Chiefs Bills is also happening this week, but this is probably my match of the round, um, just because there's so much to look out for. The Steelers defense is horribly out of form, as I mentioned. They've been shipping a lot of points to a lot of bad offenses and now they're coming up against one of the most informed offenses in the whole competition so we're going to see if they are still as good as they were last year and they've just been taking the piss in these easier matches or if they honestly do have a few problems on that side of the ball um, it obviously has huge divisional implications um, they're both from the same division in the AFC North and yeah, the Ravens haven't been in that great form. So who knows? The AFC North title still could be up for grabs. And yep, just really excited to see how this one plays out. Um, what's your other thing you want to watch this week? Uh, yeah, that's definitely a, a one to watch. I had the Giants uh, versus the football team, which is the complete opposite end of the spectrum. But I just, I just want to know who's officially the worst team out of out of those two teams. So I'm actually looking forward to it, and I hope I hope the Giants get up. Well, I'd say Washington would be the favorite going into it, but yeah, but the Giants putting up thirty points against the Cowboys. That's actually yeah, that's not, that's not the worst going round. The Giants um, are pretty much just cooked because they because of losing Saquon Barkley. But yeah, but the Washington D line's like pretty dangerous. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, and 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 that's. And it's matched up against the worst, literally the worst offensive line in football in the New York Giants. So it could get ugly for Danny Dimes once again. Yeah. Like, he, could, he could have six fumbles. <laughs> uh, um, my next point is how far away are the Bucks from reaching full potential? Um, they have to play host to the informed Green Bay Packers. Um, this is they played the Saints in round one, but as we know, the Saints haven't really been playing that well. So this is probably their first, and they did lose to the Saints, but that, that's week one. You probably can't really take much from that. So this is probably their first real test. They've now had over a month together as a team with Tom Brady leading it, and um, I don't know how Chris Godwin's injury is going, but Mike Evans is slowly getting fitter. He's still pretty cooked. He didn't do much on last last week, but. Um, Keeps getting yeah. those stupid one yard touchdowns. I'm still. Well, it's because he can't even run. Like I don't know why he's playing. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's something that needs surgery after the season or like. Yeah, he's genuinely cannot run. Like I can't believe he's playing. Yeah, but, but it's just it's uh, just ridiculous that he's averaging like elite fantasy numbers while while playing yeah. on one leg. And I'm, yeah. Yeah, it's a joke. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the Bucks go. Obviously, one of the best defenses in the league as well, which versing Aaron and in form Aaron Rodgers will be quite spicy to see. So yeah, what do you have any other points to make, mate? Yeah, my final point is news with Le'Veon Bell uh, being cut by the Jets. 
and basically just watch out where he goes. Um, I've <laughs> I've looked at the rumors, and the four teams that I've read are the Chiefs, Colts, Dolphins, and Eagles, which are literally my four running backs on my fantasy team. So like. Uh, if whichever team Lev Bell goes to, it's pretty much just going to cook whoever's the starting running back there for fantasy terms. But for real life terms, yeah. it'll be interesting to see where he goes and what his role is. Yeah, I read a few other places. Um, uh, I saw the Steelers was also a chance, Ooh. which would be quite spicy to see um, him um, come back there. Yeah, that'd be good. But yeah, definitely going to keep an eye out for that one. And also the coaching changes. I don't think any of the vacant jobs have been announced as head coaches. I actually can't lie. I don't really know if that's a thing in NFL. I feel like they just waited out to the end of the year because you have to like form your whole offense with all the, yeah. So I think they might just rock it out with, with, um, with interims, but I know Eric Bieniemy, the mad dog chiefs offensive coordinator has been heavily linked with the Texans gig. So be interesting to see what happens there. Um, my final other points are how life without Dak will go. Um, Cowboys play host to the Cardinals, probably a preferable fixture um, after losing your franchise quarterback. So if they beat the Cardinals with Andy Dalton in his first game under center at, in Dallas, I think the world's not looking that bad in Dallas. I think there's still a strong chance to win that division if they do that. However, if they do lose to the Cardinals, well, then there's red flags, Eagles are licking their lips. So I think that's a pretty big day for, for Dallas and Andy Dalton. Um, also, the 49ers, can they bounce back? Um, they're versing the Rams at home, tough fixture. Um, but we'll see if they are completely crap or if they've just had a few bad weeks, a few injured players, and they're going to come back firing. And then finally, I don't know how we haven't mentioned it, but Chiefs versus Bills. Um, probably was looking very a lot more spicy before today. Um, the Bills getting pumped by the Titans has probably taken the appeal away from this one a little bit, but um, it'll be interesting to see how the Bills' defense goes against that Chiefs' offense. Because if you're shipping forty-two to the Titans, I'm a bit worried for what their what their anal cavities are going to have to endure against Patrick Mahomes. So um, yeah, prayers up, prayers up for the Bills. Yep, uh, and hopefully Clyde Edwards gets in the end zone. Yeah, very true. For my, for my sanity. Yeah, praying for you, mate. Oh, we must be playing each other soon, because I think the cross, I think the cross conference matches start. Um, no, we've already right. played each other. Oh yeah, why did we play so early? I don't know. Yeah. I'm pretty but sure you the... scored about sixty that week, <laughs> and I scored like a hundred. It was the it was the most yeah, putrid yeah, matchup right. you'll ever see. Yeah, but I think um. Now my point score's not that bad though. Yeah, yours is way higher than mine. Mine is. I think I'm like sixth in the league, and I'm one and four. So yeah, pretty that's stiff. Yeah. That's stiff. Um, but yeah, um, looking forward to it. Yeah, I do think the next few weeks are all like interconference matches, or for me anyway. Um, but yeah, looking forward to it. Um, big week of NFL is always coming up. Um, gonna keep these weekly NFL episodes going because it's probably my main sporting passion at this moment. Um, with the Australian sports calendars kind of winding down. Um, except if you're into the bloody horse racing or the Blood is Low Cup, that was actually good. The rugby union. Yeah. Yeah, imagine if you're in America to us talking about the Blood is Low Cup, you'd have no idea what's going on. But um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your week. Thanks for listening. Enjoy week six and. Same time, same place next week, baby. Come back to us. Um, enjoy the rest of your week. Thanks for listening and thanks for joining me, Pilch. Love you, mate. Cheers, mate. You too, mate. You too. Hey.